Hi guys, you're welcome back to my Adobe Premiere Pro Masterclass. If you're just joining us, you're welcome. My name is Simo King, and today we're going to be diving into the video effects section of Adobe Premiere Pro. And in this video effects section, we're going to be talking about how to add the Cineon converter effect to use to color grade your videos. And also we're going to be talking about how to add time codes and timestamps to your videos. We're also going to be looking at how to add your clip name, how to add simple text, and how to add SDR conform to your clips in Adobe Premiere Pro. First, I'm going to be showing you how to use the Cineon Converter in Adobe Premiere Pro to change your video from a log profile to a Rec. 709 Gamma profile. Now, the Cineon Converter is used to quickly color correct and color grade your videos. But it's important that you know that this is not a precise science. It's not going to give you the same result as using your lookup tables, your LUTs, or manually color grading and color correcting your videos by yourself. However, if you find yourself in a situation where you have log footage that you need to convert quickly and conveniently without access to a lookup table or the time to manually color grade it by yourself, this will be the best technique for you. To begin with, we're going to go ahead to bring out our Lumetric scope table. If you can't find this, you go over to your windows here and you select your Lumetric scope table. And once you click on that, it should pop up. If it doesn't pop up, you can find it between your source clip, your effects control, your audio clips here, and you'll find it as one of the options here. You can drag it out. I think that should be easy to understand. Now, the reason why I prefer to use Lumetric Scope is that when color grading or color correcting, we cannot depend on our natural eyes to give us a perfect interpretation of the videos that we are seeing. But the Lumetric Scope will give us a perfect interpretation of the different color forms. As you can see over here, we are seeing that there is an excessive exposure of white over here. We can see that there is an exposure of colors arrayed over here. And this area over here is void of colors that needs to be present here. I'm going to be explaining more of that to you in a bit. Now, the first thing I want us to do is to move from our editing tab over here into the effects tab over here. Today, we're going to be talking about the video effects section. So we'll just select the video effects section. Now, when you click the video effects section, you will find a lot of effects. Now, in this tutorial, we'll be talking about every video effect that we have in Adobe Premiere Pro. But because of how long I know this video is going to be, we are going to break them into several parts. So this is part one. So to begin with, let's dive right into the utility folder here and select the Cineon Converter. So I'm going to go ahead and drag my Cineon Converter here. And immediately I do that, you will notice a kind of change in the display of our videos over here. That's one of the ways you would use to know that an effect has been added to your videos. But that is not necessarily the scenario in all cases. There are some effects that you will drag into your videos and then there will be no physical display on your video on the screen here. You will have to manually come to your effects control panel and tweak the effects to see what we have done. So if you come below now, you can see the new effects we have added, the Cineon Converter effect. Let me take this down. So if I off this FX here, you can see we have off the effect that we added. It has gone back to the original form it was. But if we switch it back on, the effect has automatically been added. So now I'm going to go ahead and add this to this other clip. So I know that I've added the effect to both clips. So you can see what the clips look like. So the first thing you want to do is to let me take this up so you, we can use our Lumetric scope to view the effects as we are adding it. So the first thing you want to do, you're going to go down to your Cineon effects over here. And on your conversion type here, you will change this from log to linear to linear to log. And automatically, you would see that it has automatically attempted to change it from a log profile to a Rec. 709 profile. Now, I will do the same thing to this other clip here. I will scroll down and change it from log to linear and then to linear to log settings. Now, the next thing you want to do is we would like to take note of our Lumetric scope over here. Now, if I should switch this effect off, you will notice that the colors were all aligned at the top. But the moment we added the Cineon Converter effect, it manually tried to make the colors spread evenly around the video, but we're going to attempt to balance it even further. It's important that you take note of the internal black points 
this moves from only 0 to 1. You don't need to touch that. The internal white point also, you don't need to touch that. It goes from 0 to 1. Now, the 10-bit black point has to deal with the number of black light or shadows that is in your videos. So, we can go ahead and adjust this. So, I'm taking this down. I want it to reach just a point of this 0 over here. So, I'm going to take it to the point where it exactly just touches 0 in the line there. I think um, 200 is fine. So you come over to your 10 bit white point line over here. And then I would like to adjust it to the point where it just goes a little bit above. I will adjust it to the point where it just al aligns with the whites here. I don't want it to be too much. So I'll just take this to, I think 746 here kind of does it for me. I'm not trying to do, but it depends on your clip also. You want to make use of the lines the Lumetri scope and also you want to compare it with what you are seeing physically. So I've done this now, I've changed it from linear to log. And so one thing I'll, you'll want to notice right now in this clip is that the background just seems like a plain white background. So, and then I can see some kind of white that is falling off on his shirt over here. The white seems excessive if you look at your Lumetri scope here, you will see that there's still this white that is really excessive. Let me take this down. So what I'll do is I'll try to increase my highlight roll off. And while I do that, you will notice that I am reducing the whites that is excessive over here. So, so if you notice now, the cloud is no longer as white as it was. The excessive white that was on him has reduced. Let me take it back down so you can see how excessive it was. So I've reduced it now. Now the gamma over here, I can choose to increase the gamma or reduce the gamma so that it's a little bit blended because the shadow was just um, too much. So I'll just increase the gamma too close to... I think this does it for me, 3.0. So I'll just add the same figures from this to this other clip over here, 3.01, 150, 746, 200. Okay. 110 seems fair on this video. So the gamma, the gamma looks okay like this. 2.80 actually looks fine on this other clip. That's the thing about videos. So it can, because we have changed the camera angle, it has also affected the amount of exposure and light on the on this other video here. I mean, just make it a little brighter. And so this, I might want to take it as high as that level. So if I come back to the beginning of this clip now, if I should switch this off, the Sinian effects, you can see what the clip looked like initially. But if I switch it on, you can see the difference that we have added. All right, guys, so that's it on how to use the Sinian converter effect to convert your videos from a log profile to a VEX 709 profile in Adobe Premiere Pro. Now, this might not be a complete way to color correct or color grade your video. It might not give you that aesthetic feel that you desire, but it's a fast way to edit your videos when you're shot in log profile mode and you need to quickly export and give it to a client. Now the next thing I want to show you is how to add time codes to your videos in Premiere Pro. So I'll scroll down here to time codes. So I'll go ahead and close this Lumetric scope over here and I'll come over here and click on add new transparent video. It's important that you confirm that your sequence settings is the same with what you have. And once you've confirmed that this is correct, you click on OK. Now you drag your selected transparent video and stretch it from the beginning to the end of the clip. Now you can carry the, the time code effect and drag it on top of your transparent video. And now you will notice that from the beginning to the end, we have our time code over here. However, there's a problem we are noticing. You will notice a problem that our video, our time code is not beginning from zero position. So what you want to do is to change your time code from media to generate. Now, if you change your time code for media to generate, it's going to start from zero. Now, if you hit on play, 
you're going to notice that it's going to be moving from the beginning of the clip. If you select clip, the time code is going to move on only this clip. Now when it moves to another clip, it's going to stop. So if you are trying to add time code to only a single clip, you can select the clip that you want, drag the time code on top of that single clip, and then all you need to do is select a single clip, and then that time code is going to move on that single clip. It's not going to, you're not going to have the time code past that single clip. You may want to change the offset. For example, you want it to start some seconds or some minutes faster or before time you come over here and then you change the offset and then it's going to start from that time that you have added onto it so you can also off the field symbol by selecting this you change off the field symbol like that you can label the text by selecting the camera you want if it's a camera one you're trying to take note or you're trying to pass the information to any other video editor you might want to select camera one or camera two so you can have an idea that this video was shot with camera one this is helpful when you when you shot with multi cameras and you're trying to edit a video that was shot with multiple cameras so take that back to none you can also change the size of your time code you can also change the opacity but this does not affect the opacity of the time code itself but the background of the time code so you can see that as we change the opacity over here it affects the background of our time code over here you can also change the position of your time code you have the ability to change the position of your time code as you wish so the next thing i want to show you guys is how to freeze time in adobe premiere pro so for example you have a video that is playing now and the time is reading and you want the time to freeze at a particular position what you want to do is to select your transparent background here that you have added your time code effect to you right click on it and then you nest it once you nest it like that you have nested the transparent video and the time code together into a single clip at a position any position where you want the video to stop moving you can right click and click add frame hold now the moment you do this you can hit on play and then the time code will play but the moment it reaches that frame hold you will notice that it has stopped playing while your video is still moving. That's a simple way of freezing your time code in Adobe Premiere Pro. So the next thing I want to show you is how to use the clip name effect in Adobe Premiere Pro. You come back to your effects control, then video, and you can drag your clip name effect on top of your clip. Once you do that, let me drag this down. You come back to your effects control tab over here. You can see your clip name over here. Okay, so the clip name is on top of our time code. You can drag it above the time code so you can see your clip name and then you can see the time code so you can apply any effect change the position you can change the name to the left you can adjust the size reduce that back to the way it was you can affect the opacity of the background also put that back the way it was you can okay so the reason why it's showing a sequence clip name is that i dragged the clip name to my sequence but if you want a video name, you can drag the clip name to your video over here. And automatically, you are going to see a name appear. And then you can drag the video name, probably drag the video name and push it to another portion over here. So basically, these are just ways of adding informations overlays to your project that you are still working on so that other video editors can have access to them and work with them or maybe you're trying to add important information to your project while you're still working on them so that you can understand the clips you are working on for example you want to know you have multiple clips on your timeline and then you want to be able to differentiate each of them with their clip names this is a very simple way of knowing your clips by simply seeing their names one thing you will need to know also is that you cannot change the name your clip name or your nested name once you've added this you don't have this option now the solution to that is maybe you want to add an information to remind you or you want to put an information for another video editor to see you have the option here of bringing in the simple text now what the simple text does is that let me drop this on the video here the moment i drop this you will notice another text have appeared in the same position i can come over here and drag the simple text name 
above. Now you can see, now this one, we have the opportunity to edit the text. You can come over here and edit this text. Now leave only the default portion. And then you can see, we can leave any information we want on that overlay. For example, I can drop a note and say, kindly color grade at 0.523. So whoever is watching this video that is working on this project with me will notice this, read this text. And when it gets to 523, he will notice the, if the note that I have dropped for him to pay attention to. Or you might just want to add a simple graphics and you don't have time to go into the graphics panel or come over to your text panel and add text and you just need something very simple something very basic you just drag this and drop and edit it very simple drag your time code very simple drag the name of your clip very simple now the next thing i'm going to be showing you is how to add the sdr conform now you use the sdr conform to convert your high dynamic range video to sdr to that standard dynamic range for playback on non-hdr devices so you have a device that does not support hdr resolution high definition hdr you can use the sdr conform to transform that video clip from hdr to sdr so basically if i come here and i switch this off you will notice that it became brighter so when i put the sdr conform it automatically dropped the video quality from hdr to sdr but they have given us some options here where we can also increase and the brightness we can increase the contrast and all of that we can increase or reduce the soft knee and use the soft knee over here to control the transition to full compression if you want it to be full compression it affects the level of compression of your clip from hdr to sdr so basically guys that's it on this tutorial today we've showed you how to add the senior converter effect i've showed you how to add the clip name effect i've showed you how to add the sdr conform effect i've showed you how to add the simple text effect and i've showed you how to add the time code or the timestamp effect to your clip in adobe premiere pro i hope you found this tutorial very useful this is just the beginning we've done the video effects and we've got we've done the utility folder effect in the next tutorial we're going to be talking about how to add the transition how to add the block dissolve how to use the gradient wipe the linear wipe the radial wipe and the venetial blinds effect in our videos in Adobe Premiere Pro.